Coming up on UCF Nightly News, Hurricane Irma breaking records, now Category 5 storm. Hurricane hunters are continuing to monitor the powerful system as it approaches Florida. Plus, as many evacuate, some are taking their animals with them. Find out what pet owners are doing to keep their animals safe during the storm. And we'll take a look at the science behind some of the models you've been seeing as Irma continues to develop. But first, the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center is in. We'll bring you the updated track for Irma's path. Nightly News starts now. Good afternoon and welcome to Nightly News. I'm Anna Espinosa. Hurricane Irma is making its way closer to Florida and Joaquin Dixon has the latest track just received by the National Hurricane Center. Joaquin, what does the storm look like? Well, Anna, as of right now, we're looking at the National Hurricane Center's 2 p.m. weather advisory. Currently, the, the hurricane is hitting Puerto Rico pretty hard. It has a maximum, maximum sustained winds of up to 185 miles per hour and moving west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. As I said, it's moving, moving west, so it's hitting Haiti and the Dominican Republic, the north side of that pretty hard right now, out into the Bahamas. Right now, we're at an advisory for the Bahamas and Cuba, and it takes a sharp turn to Florida sometime between the next four to five days. As I said before, we're in a, a, the weather, the, the wind speeds are extremely high, 185 miles per hour. We're not sure if by the time it hits Florida, the category of the hurricane will be a category five. It could be a four or three. Regardless, we're inside of the cone, so nights, make sure to pick up supplies, stay safe. UCF has officially canceled classes starting tomorrow, September 7th, and the campus will remain closed until September 11th, but the football game scheduled for Friday will go on as planned. UCF will continue to send update alerts as the storm gets closer. Recent models from the National Hurricane Center show that Florida is likely along Hurricane Irma's path. In preparation, some students are already heading home to get out of the hurricane's potential wrath. Some are stocking up on groceries and supplies as they prepare to weather the storm near campus. Officials plan to shut down the school and will send alerts through the UCF app. The university can keep all students posted through text and social media. The Warning and Communications Coordinator at UCF, Joe Thalheimer, says student safety is the university's number one priority. We do an assessment of the buildings, we get reports back, and if all the buildings on the campus are deemed safe to occupy, then we make the recommendation to bring students back. Depending on the severity of the hurricane, any student not able to evacuate will be placed in rideout buildings by emergency management. Buildings will then be inspected before students can return to normal schedules. Right now, parts of Florida are evacuating as Irma continues making its way towards the state. Central Florida has not been ordered to evacuate as of now, but families should have a plan in place if the time does come. FloridaDisaster.org has up-to-date evacuation routes available. Tolls remain suspended today following Governor Rick Scott's orders that FDOT eliminate the cost of, for Floridian evacuating. Scott says the lift on the tolls should help ease some of the burden for those preparing to weather the storm. State officials say the tolls will be suspended as long as Hurricane Irma impacts Florida. As Irma approaches, preparations are taking place across the state. Lines at the pumps are getting longer as Orlando residents prepare for a potential hit from Hurricane Irma. Gas stations are seeing an increase in demand for fuel and residents are seeing an increase in the prices. Most recently, gas was as low as $2.39, according to the fuel price tracking website GasBuddy. Now, the average tank of gas is about $2.70. 
Gas Buddy shows that about four dozen gas stations around Central Florida have run out of gas as of Wednesday morning. Stations still have a few more days to bring in fuel before the storm actually hits. Gas isn't the only thing people are stocking up on. While keeping an eye on Irma, people are purchasing items faster than local stores can restock them. Walmart and Publix near campus are packed with people in need of supplies. The supplies are becoming more distant as the storm moves closer. Canned goods like soup and tuna and even bread are quickly being taken from the shelves and water seems to be what people need the most. Residents are forming lines to fill water jugs and water bottles are becoming more scarce. Four-legged friends may be in jeopardy with the approach of Hurricane Irma. Nightly News reporter Tiffany Thompson spoke to Central Florida residents about how they're prepping their animals for the hurricane. Oh, come on. Share a like. Mommy needs some too. Preparations for animals are underway as Florida anticipates Hurricane Irma's potential arrival. Local feed and supply stores are swamped and employees say the crowds are expected to grow. After seeing the devastation Harvey brought to Texas just two weeks ago, some people say they don't know whether to evacuate or stay home. Tractor supply shopper Sharon Digby says she can't evacuate with her horses and chickens. Well, you do put in a lot of feed and hay. Um, we're on a well system, so we have to make sure we have a generator to run the pump. Horses don't drink the water out of the pool. Digby says she will hunker down with her dogs and hope for the best. David Otterson, the owner of Painted Oaks Academy, says the most important thing he can do to prepare is to make sure his yard is safe and his animals are comfortable. So many, you know. And we did we cut up all our oak trees, branches up off the ground because the hurricanes will blow the trees over if the branches ain't trimmed up high enough. Otterson says he does this so loose objects don't hit the animals. Associate veterinarian Yetcha Peters says the best thing to do is to have multiple plans. Also making sure that you've got plenty of supplies, whether you're going to be stuck at home or whether you're going to be um, evacuating, you want to make sure that anything that you might need, you bring with you. Peters says that if people must leave their animals behind to evacuate, to make sure they have access to plenty of food and water. Reporting in Orlando, Tiffany Thompson, UCF Nightly News. Peters also says there's Stickers that can be put in house windows that signal emergency teams to be on the lookout for pets when doing rescues. As Hurricane Irma approaches, Knight's Pantry at UCF is stocking up on food supplies for students. The pantry is stocked with items like canned goods, clothes, toiletries, and drinks. Any student with a valid UCF ID can pick up no more than five items a day. Operating hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. through the rest of the week until further notice. A volunteer at the pantry says they should have enough items to last throughout the week, but it's never a bad idea to stop by and drop off a few items that could help a fellow night. Central Florida residents are filling sandbags in case of flooding from Irma. The city of Orlando is giving out 10 sandbags per address and residents must show proof of Orange County residents. These locations will be giving sandbags out from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Thursday and on Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On your screen, you can see several locations where to pick up the sandbags. You have one in Bithlow, one on Goldenrod, one on John Young, one on Taft, and one in West Orange, and another in Zellwood. Hurricane Irma is approaching the Sunshine State. After the break, we'll tell you more about what the hurricane models mean.
A change in plans for UCF's second football game of the season could mean smaller crowds at the event. The game, originally scheduled for Saturday, was moved to Friday at 6.30 because of the Hurricane Irma's threat. The American Athletic Conference canceled all tailgating from the game against the University of Memphis in an email sent to students. All family weekend events rescheduled are canceled and officials say refunds for special events will be issued. Spaghetti models and cones of uncertainty have been splashed all over our television screens as we track Hurricane Irma. Still, though, many of us are unfamiliar with what exactly those models mean. I looked into what these scientific models mean and just how accurate they really are when it comes to predicting storms. A spaghetti plot is a meteorological tool used to determine the possible path of a storm. The multiple paths that look like spaghetti noodles are actually computer models that factor in statistics, atmospheric conditions, and other climate information. The cone of uncertainty is made by the National Hurricane Center. The farther the storm is out, the wider the cone will be due to that uncertainty. Sean Milrad, a professor of meteorology at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, says meteorologists' cones are influenced by previous storms. One caution I'll say with the cone is that um, you should never focus on the center line. In fact, NHC has removed that as the default. You can still toggle it on, but um, TV stations, I, I think a lot of them have done this, but they sh really shouldn't show the center of the cone because it's relatively meaningless. In 1992, Hurricane Andrew took a similar path to Irma. However, Andrew's path was a little more horizontal and ended up doing massive damage to Miami. Professor Milrad also says that technology has improved greatly, allowing forecasts to be more accurate. As models have gotten better, forecasts are confident, specifically in the three to seven day range has improved. So our, tra our ability to forecast track has at longer lead times has improved a lot. Now Irma has reached maximum sustained wind speeds of 185 miles per hour, making it the strongest storm the Atlantic has ever seen. Mountainous terrain over the Dominican Republic and Cuba could potentially weaken the storm as it makes its way towards Florida. What a difference one week has made for Hurricane Irma. When the hurricane first popped up, officials expected it to be a Category 3 storm. Intensity fluctuated through the weekend and Irma has rapidly grown to a Category 5 hurricane. I talked with WFTV meteorologist Brian Shields and he broke down some of what we can expect from this powerful storm. Now winds at 157 or above are very rare and that makes it a category five hurricane and we just don't often see those around. And uh, this one again has winds that have been 175, 180. That is some powerful stuff. Shield says he used the Sapphire Simpson hurricane wind scale to measure the intensity of hurricanes. The scale ra ranges from category one to five and labels category three and higher storms to be major. According to that scale, a Category 5 hurricane has the potential to bring catastrophic damage and power outages that could last for weeks, if not months. Once again, guys, Irma is definitely our top priority right now. We want to get you guys up to speed and ready for that. But also, we want to get you guys ready for what the temperatures look like today. Um, so we start off with our highs, Miami, um, where the, the hurricane will probably feel the most effects, has 89 degrees. Orlando is also 89 degrees, Tampa is 90 degrees, Jacksonville is 82 degrees, and then Tallahassee rounds out the highs at 84 degrees. Now let's take a look at our lows. The lows for Tallahassee is going to be 65 degrees, Jacksonville is 72, Orlando is 74, Tampa is 77, and Miami is 80 degrees. That's all we have for weather now, guys. Have a safe weekend. And that's our time for now. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can always keep up with us during the week on our website, nightlynews.ucf.edu. And if you've got a story idea you want us to know about, send it our way. You can reach us at nightlynews.ucf.edu. Thank you for watching and have a great day.